We're going to go ahead and call this pattern the Haddon Hopper. I figured why not. I haven't tried to name too many flies after our family name. Um, as you can see, we're starting out on sort of an unorthodox way, um, tying on a sewing pin. And the reason I'm doing that is we're going to tie this as an extended body um, grasshopper or hopper fly. Uh, and you'll also notice I haven't tied a lot of wraps around that sewing pin. And uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, I do not want to have too much tightness. Um, and by using the thread all the way up the, the length of this sewing pin here, what's going to end up happening is it'll be much harder to pull off of the, the sewing pin when we're done with it. So what I'm going to turn to first is a trigger point. As I like it. It's just kind of an off-white. You could use a Zelon or an Antron. doesn't really matter. You're not going to be seeing this anyway. But we're going to go ahead and get that attached on to our sewing pin here. With just a couple of thread wraps and then I'm really going to try to keep my fingers out of the way as much as possible here. That's why I'm in a different colored shirt not that anyone would pay attention to that but um, I found that this portion of the video I shot had my fingers all the way through it and you couldn't see anything that I was doing. Not just not a little bit, but you could not see anything. A key here is as I'm putting this trigger point onto this sewing pin, is I'm doing it very loosely. The reason I'm putting this material on here is only to help us slide it off a little bit easier. It gives us a buffer. So now as I take my thread back Similarly, I don't want to crank down on this. I want this to be fairly loose so I'm not fighting it as I'm trying to get uh, the extended body off of the needle here. So I'll kind of take a look at where we are. Um, I'm okay with that. We will go ahead and come on in, just do a little bit of house cleaning anyway. By cutting off some of the extra material that we've got there. So we got something that looks about like that. So what you just saw happen happens to us all. I was trimming the material and I cut my thread off. Um, but it's a good chance for me to show you that you don't have to start out from scratch when that happens. Unless everything comes unwrapped, of course. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and reattach and again take loose wraps of this thread up this sewing pin here and we'll end up in the exact same place. So we all do it. Um, if somebody says they never do it, they're probably not being completely honest with you. But recovery is, is actually pretty darn easy. Um, so we're back in business um, without me starting all the way over um, from scratch. So for the extended body, I'm going to be using some foam. This is two mil, two millimeter. Got it cut about the what the gap of my hook will be. And we're going to be using that to create that extended body. So I want to make sure that I put this on so that the end is pretty close to where I've tied off with my thread. And I'm going to just start out by getting this secured onto the shank of our sewing pin. I don't know if there is such a thing as a shank of a sewing pin, but I'm going to refer to it that way. So I've got that on and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work a little bit on compressing it. So now I'm going to pull a little bit tighter. 
Um, and that's the nice thing about working with this foam is it compresses down pretty darn good. Um, kind of like you can see here. And then I'm going to bring my thread back up putting pressure on it again to just help me compress until we get back up to closer to the point of that sewing pin really from there I'm just going to go ahead and let my thread dangle a little bit just to make this a little bit more robust I'm going to put some Zappa Gap or Z mount or super glue, whatever you want to call it, onto this foam. And that'll just help our foam adhere a little bit better uh, as we're winding it up, our sewing pin. So here is where things went horribly wrong last time in terms of my fingers covering up. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful. And we are just going to take spiraling wraps moving up the shank of the hook here or shank of the hook shank of the sewing pin here I do want to cramp down clip uh, pull pretty tight because I want a pretty narrow body here so again moving my fingers out of the way if I can remember I'm going to hold that in place with one finger while I grab with the other and I'm just overlapping these wraps. So not quite a half, um, a little bit less than a half of overlap here as we're working our way back up to where our thread is located. If your super glue zap gap starts gushing out, that's just fine. Um, that's almost to be expected here. So. Hopefully you can see we're starting to create that nice um, tapered body. And hopefully I'm keeping my fingers out of the field of view this time so you can kind of see it a little bit better. And there's the beauty of the Zappa Gap. I lost control of that foam and it didn't completely come unwound. So now we're about right here, getting closer to the very front. I'm going to make sure I have everything kind of cinched down nicely. And this will be my last wrap here. Then we're going to go ahead, we'll take our thread. I'm going to secure that foam down with a few thread wraps over the top. I've got this nice big tag end here. I'm not too worried about that. Um, we're going to use that when we attach this extended body onto the fly. Uh, what I will do because I'm going to whip finish is I'm going to, I don't need all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and clip out at least a little bit of it. Um, and then from there, I'm just going to go ahead. We're going to grab our whip finisher just so we can finish this off and put a knot in place. And that's why I cut part of that material off. It just makes it easier for me to whip finish here. So once I feel pretty good about that, um, hopefully you can see that extended body a little bit. I can come on in, I'll turn my, my vise. Actually I won't because it ended up on the top. I'll just grab my thread cutters and we're gonna go ahead and remove. So one of the things that I do like to look at this pat, do with this pattern is kind of take a quick look at where those overlapping wraps are. And I've just got a brown Sharpie. And this will just help accentuate a little bit those segments. 
So now I'm going to kind of turn it upside down so I get all the way through. And even if you just make polka dots or, you know, just kind of dot it a little bit, that's going to be good enough. You don't want to overdo it. You just want kind of that hint. And the other thing that I like to do with hoppers is they tend to have a dot, a spot in between on either side. So I'm just going to, as you can see, I'm just adding a nice little dot on that side of the body. And then I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And really, that's all there is to it. I don't want to go um, crazy with it. Um, I just wanted it to go like that. Uh, in theory, at this point, now we should be able to kind of spin and pull that extended body right off uh, with a super glue. I can go ahead and make some final adjustments before that super glue sets. And I want this body to be pretty straight. And you can see I've got a little bit of that trigger point out of the back. I'm going to go ahead and trim it. So we're about like that. So hopefully you can see that. That's going to be the butt end of our extended body. Um, I've got my dots on either side. And I've got a really nice tie-in point um, up here. And so when I'm tying this fly, I'm going to set this to the side. And I'm going to put a hook in the vise. Um, and then we'll make use of this extended body as well as the other materials um, to add on to this. Uh, hat and hopper. I've got my hook secured here in my vise. This is a size 14. Um, whether it's um, a dry hook or not doesn't really matter. I mean, we've got enough foam on this sucker that, you know, it's going to be hard to sink. I'm just going to go ahead and take thread wraps back now to establish a base. And again, I'm using that same 14 knot shear that's kind of a yellow tan color which blends in really nicely um, with the materials that we're using, the foam especially that we're using here. So once I've got that secured, I'm just going to come in with my scissors. Um, I, this is a size 14, and quite often you'll see hoppers tied much larger than this. And this is, again, just one of those where it, it matches closer to the, the size of the hoppers that we have in our area. We do have some big ones, um, but more commonly I see these smaller ones. And once I've gone that far, we're about ready to tie on our body. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some super glue on those wraps, some zap gap. Um, just to help us as we tie this body down to try to get that body more secure um, on the hook here so that it doesn't spin around as much. Um, it's certainly not going to come out off regardless of really what I do with it. So I've got my extended body here. just going to attach this to our hook um, and again that's why I put some of that zap a gap on there was to just try to help this as much as I can um, stay where I want it on my hook and I don't need that last little bit you can cut away um, but it's hard to add back so I'd much rather be in this position so I'm just going to turn to some hair's ear plus dubbing, which is just some hair's ear dubbing. I'm using a tan because it matches really well. 
and it's called plus because it does have a little bit of shiny stuff in it I'm just gonna finger dub that right on to my thread here and you'll see as we tie this we're gonna we're gonna consistently go back to this material it's gonna help everything stay in place but it's also gonna be covering up a lot of our thread wraps I'm just going to kind of tighten that down as I go. I don't want this to be incredibly buggy. Um, which is unusual for me. I usually like things really buggy. So I'm going to trim out some of these longer fibers. But um, hoppers typically are not very buggy. I mean, they're pretty streamlined. And so I don't necessarily want a whole bunch of fibers um, sticking out. So next we're going to tie in a, hop, a couple of legs um, and these are those defining uh, bits um, of, of any hopper pattern and all I've done is taken some uh, pheasant tail fibers and I've put a knot in them and they make for just a wonderful um, hopper leg. And identify about where I want that on my fly here. I'll just take a couple of wraps to kind of secure that in place and that gives me a chance also to kind of take a look and see if it's where I want it to be. And I want them on a little bit of an upward angle but not not a ton. Um, so you can kind of see what we have going on there. And I'm going to grab my next set, which obviously is going to be hopefully the same length as that first set. I'm going to be tying that on my side of the hook. Kind of hold both of those in place there. And then we'll go ahead and get those secured down. And then I'm just going to take a look at that other set, make sure they're about where I want them to be. So we have kind of those really nice kind of hoppery uh, looking legs. Hoppery. Yes, it is a word. I've said it twice now. So my theory has always been if you say something twice, it becomes a real word. So before I move on, this is just personal preference. I'm going to go ahead and trim these out the butt ends of these hopper legs. About like that. The other thing, or <laughs> the area below this knee joint kind of thing, um, that's much longer than what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip those off trying to get those on either side to be about the same length. And once I've done that, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of run my scissors through a few of those fibers here. And make a cut. All I'm doing there is the bottom part of the legs um, are going to be a little bit less dense than the upper part and by cutting a couple of these fibers out right here and now then we kind of get that effect that we're looking for. So that has me sitting about about where I want to be. So before I move on too much further, I'm going to go ahead and grab myself another piece of 2 mil foam about the exact same width as we used on the body. I'm just going to go ahead and tie this in. This is going to end up being our kind of over the top head. Kind of giving us more of that square looking head. I'm just going to go ahead and compress this material down and try to bring it right back into those legs that we just tied in. So 
So once I have that down like this, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull that material over the top of the eye of my hook and I'm going to do the same thing where we're going to compress this stuff down pretty good. I'm trying to leave a tiny little bit of space behind the eye but um, by all means it doesn't need to be much um, at all. And then similar to what we've done so far we're going to go ahead and pull a little bit tighter on it just so we can compress that material down a little bit. And this was going to help us get that kind of more square um, profile, like you'll see with hoppers most commonly. But I'm just going to take some wraps, leaving that hanging right out over the top of the hook. That's where I want it. And I'm just going to come right back again to about where I've got those legs. Next, I'm just going to turn to a turkey uh, a quill here. Um, I prefer the kind of darker, uh, kind of mottled um, area of this feather right through here. So I'm going to kind of measure myself out a nice little bunch of those. We're going to kind of look at that tie-in point where it's going to kind of touch that glue. I'm going to cheat a little bit, have it aimed a little bit more towards my side of the hook, just for a moment. We'll go ahead and tie that in. I'm not going to really pull tight um, until I make it around a couple of loops. Um, just primarily because I do want to keep that um, wing somewhat flat. Or at least as flat as we can. I'll go ahead and pull our legs out from under there a little bit. So now that we've got that nice and secure, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to come in with our scissors and trim out these butt ends. And I'm going to want this wing to be just barely beyond the body. And then I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of an angle on this to give it more of that rounded appearance. So we end up with something that's looking more like that. And slowly but surely, starting to look a little bit more like a hopper. This right about here is a good time for us to jump back and grab ourselves a little bit more dubbing to kind of cover up some of those. We've taken a lot of thread wraps here to kind of secure both the legs and that wing in place. And so I want to cover those up a little bit before I put on my next set of legs. And so I'm just going to take the smallest amount of the exact same tan dubbing. I'm going to just, I, once again, I'm just going to finger dub that right onto the thread. Go ahead and slide that on down. And it doesn't hurt to kind of look underneath. What do I have? What do I have going on here? just so that we're sure that we're pretty much covering up what we want to cover up here. That's going to do me just fine. So the next part, I'm going to put some legs on here and I've just got some sexy floss and a golden um, uh, black bard. I'm going to grab two of these. I'll tie one in on the camera side, the lens side of the hook and we'll tie one in on my side of the hook just so we each have something you and me all right so here's my little piece of that sexy floss I'm just going to kind of hold that up against the side take a wrap or two to just get that secured in place I don't really need to really you know reef down on this pull down really tight once I have that those legs in place then I can maneuver them a little bit. Here's the other one we're going to be tying that in on my side of the hook. 
So similar to the last one, I'm just going to kind of hold that right up against the edge, the side. And take a wrap right through the center of that other one. I'll take a couple more wraps here. And then I'll work on some initial um, situating there. So we got this crazy looking um, thing going on here, uh, which is telling me that it's time to turn to our dubbing again. So this should be the last time we go to our dubbing. You can probably see from the video that we are getting very close to the the eye of the hook. So that tells me that the ending is coming near. I'll go ahead and give myself a little bit of thread. I'm going to finger dump, dub this on as well, just like we have the other ones. Hold that up kind of a little bit. So I'm going to take a wrap right through the center of those legs. Then I want to take one wrap behind them just to finish uh, a little bit of that covering up. And I'm going to bring it back. Then I'll try to get a wrap or two on the other side of these legs. And I am going to go ahead and end this up just right in between both sets of these legs. Um, this is that point in time where I want to kind of adjust them, make sure I've got them about where I want them. Um, sometimes they'll cooperate with you and sometimes they won't. So, last thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fold this foam backwards over the top of that wing. I'm going to take a wrap right over the top of it. And go ahead and pull that a little bit tight just to make sure we're keeping that nice and in place where we want it. Yeah, really I'm fighting these legs on that side, which is aggravating. But hey, we're tying flies. No need to get aggravated. Okay. So now that we're here, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to grab the front two legs together. That's just going to help me make sure I cut these about the same length. Like that. Back legs, I'm going to cut those off as well. About the same length as the front. I'm going to go ahead and grab my whip finisher and I'm just going to whip finish right in this same area. Right in between those legs there. Pull that a little bit tight, release it, grab my thread cutter, we'll come on in and detach our thread. And then last of all, I'm just going to go ahead and clip this off fairly tight and straight, as straight as you can get it. Um, and then I'll come in and kind of round those corners off a little bit. As much as they might need. Um, from here I just like to do a little bit of a finishing touch. I'll just grab my Sharpie again and I'm just going to be very gentle with it. And I'm just going to put just the hint of an eye on either side here. Just about like 
that. I'm just going to put a couple of little streaks running right down the center here. Just to give it that final kind of modeled uh, look. Um, but with that, there you go. Um, Haddon's Hopper. Looks a little bit more like the hoppers that we have around here. Um, wonderful fly. It will float really well for you. And what you'll, what I often will do um, when I'm fishing with this, and you'll hear this when you go to your fly shops and things like that, they'll talk about what's called a hopper, hopper dropper. And what I tend to like to do with a hopper dropper, I'm going to take a really small bead head fly about like this um, that I've tied up previously and I'm going to tie some line on the back end and I'm going to have that dropper about 10 to 14 inches behind my grasshopper, my hopper here. That's why they call it a hopper dropper because this is a dropper that's going to be dropped down behind. And what you'll find when you fish with that um, is the fish may take this as a terrestrial, as a hopper, or it may take your dropper that's um, floating, not floating, but sunk down a little bit underneath of your, your grasshopper. Um, and at that point, your hopper almost becomes more like a strike indicator. Um, it'll float because we've got so much foam on it. So um, it's kind of a twofer where you may have fish taking this hopper directly or they may take your dropper. Um, fun pattern to tie, just take your time, um, add whatever unique aspects to it that you would like um, on your own hopper, um, and just have a good time with it. Mm -hmm.